and welcome to our semester. So the goal here is to give you an experience um, similar to what you might have in class. The guided student notes will give you a chance to listen to some explanations, uh, follow along as we take some notes, and try some exercises or practice problems on your own. If you haven't printed out the guided student notes, uh, pause this recording and print them out so that you can follow along and take some notes as we go. So our first topic is place value and rounding. And um, well, I know some of you are rolling your eyes at that because you think that's really, really easy. But it's really important, of course, for you to be able to communicate well verbally and in writing about the size of a value. The last thing you want to do is to have somebody misunderstand what number you're trying to represent. So let's start. Uh, let's start with digits. A digit is a single character. So I'm a little bit new to using this pen here, so I'm going to apologize right away for my handwriting. There we go. A single character. A single character in a number. So we're not talking like a letter here or a variable, but a single character in a number is something like maybe 0, 1, 2. We have 10 digits. So two, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Of course, 10 is not a digit. 10 is a two digit number because it uses one and zero. Place value is the value given to a digit. because of its location. That's why it's called place value. Because of its location in a number. So on our tests and quizzes coming up, you should expect some vocabulary questions. Take some time to put these vocabulary words maybe on note cards or quiz yourself, but we should understand what the meaning of the word digit and place value and whole number is. So if we had the word, uh, sorry, the number maybe 652, then six is in the hundreds place, and that's why we call it 600. And the hundred is the place value for the digit six, right? 52, the five is in the tens place, and 10, the tens place, that's how we get five becomes 50. Um, let's see, a whole number, whole number, well, let's see, let's look at this word here, whole. Whole number means complete, right? So we don't have any parts. In terms of numbers, that means we're not going to use any decimals, we're not going to have any fractions, we're also not going to use any negative numbers. So whole numbers as a set start at zero, and then we count up by ones, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then so on and so forth. So that dot, dot, dot means that, of course, the pattern continues on and on through infinity. So it's your job now to pause the recording and see if you can cross off some of the numbers in the list below that are not whole numbers. OK, let's see how you did. Is 8,000 a whole number? Yes, it is. That one stays in the list. It's a large number, but it doesn't have any parts. It doesn't have any fractions. 7.2, not a whole number. The decimal point ruins it. Uh, negative 5, also not a whole number. We're not allowed to have negatives inside our whole number list. Is 0 a whole number? Yes, it is. It's right in our list up here. That's where the whole numbers begin. Um, me, I like to sort of give ourselves some uh, homonyms, words that sound the same. Whole as H-O-L-E looks like a 0, and whole, W-H-O-L-E. So we know that 0 is a whole number. 3 fourths, not a whole number. No parts allowed. What about 978? Definitely a whole number. So in terms of whole numbers, we say that we cannot have any decimals, no fractions, and no negatives. OK, so here we have our place value chart. And you should know all the different names for these place values. So we just scroll up here a little bit. So for example, over here on the far right hand, 
we would have the ones place. So follow along and let's start this labeling. After the ones comes the tens place and then comes the hundreds place. Most of us are familiar with these so far. Um, we have thousands and then ten thousands followed by a hundred thousands. And if you're starting to see a pattern, that's because there is one. So we always have this one tens hundreds thing happening with possibly a trailing word. So the next one we have millions. Some people say one millions, but uh, millions is fine. And then come ten millions. and 100 millions. Do you know what comes after millions? Ah, yep, that would be the billions with a B. And now you know what comes after those because we're still following that pattern. So we have 10 billions and 100 billions. And after billions, yes, trillions, T-R. Still following that pattern, we would have 10 trillions. And I'll wipe out the size of the national debt. And 100 trillions. All right, so there we go, the place value chart. Um, a period is a set of three digits that are separated by commas. So when we write these large numbers right after the we have a comma that goes between the thousands place and the hundreds place. There's another comma right before the millions, a comma right before the billions, and a comma right before the trillions. And so these set of three digits, these all have names. So here, the name is always the far right one. So this is the ones period. We name it by the far right place value. From here to here, this is the thousands period because all of these types of numbers are named in thousands. Of course, this next one is the millions period. And then here, right, naming by the far right place value, the orange one, this is the billions period. And over here, we have the trillions period. There, we'll clean that up a little bit. So we have a set of three digits separated by commas. And of course, these are named by the far right. place value. So our job here is to write this giant number using words. And if we're going to be dealing with amounts of this size, the last thing we want to do is miscommunicate. So let's put all of these digits up here in our place value chart. And so what we do is we read these sets of three numbers off just as we would an ordinary three digit number. But then after that, we name the place value, uh, sorry, the period name. So here we have 127, but it's in the billions period. So we say 127 billion.
there should be a hyphen between the words 20 and 7. And then just as there is in the written number, we'll put a comma after it. Now all these zeros here are in the millions period, so there's nothing here. We don't have any millions, so we won't name that at all. But then after that, the 0, 050, zero, that's just 50. But it's in the thousands period, so this is 50,000. Another comma. And then the last part, of course, 002 zero, two is just 2. Let's flip the page and try the process in reverse. If we had the words, could we write the number? Whoop, went a little far there, didn't I? Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is look at the number and find our largest place value. And let's make digits for, uh, sorry, spaces for all of the digits that we might need. So we have three spaces for the ones period, three spaces for the thousands period, three spaces for the millions period, three spaces for the billions period, and we have to go all the way up to the trillions period. Okay, so we have 908 trillions. So over here in the trillions period, we're just going to write the number 908. Do we have any billions? Nope, those aren't mentioned at all, so we'll fill those in with zeros. The millions period, uh-oh, ones period, thousands period, okay, yes, this is the millions period. Six million, so that's a zero, zero, six. Fifty-eight thousand, and that's it. So we don't have any values in the ones period, and there we go. So we want to find the trillions period first, make spaces for everything else so that we don't accidentally shift things over by a group of three, because that would be a big mistake. You'll notice that we haven't used the word and anywhere yet so far. So a lot of people say 908, and that's just lazy language. It's not really precise. With mathematics, the word and is reserved to represent the location of the decimal point. So let's slide down a little bit and check out the decimal place values. Oops, there I go, over scrolling again. I'll get the hang of this. So this time I wrote them all in so that we wouldn't have to do this again. Um, so let's see, what do we have? As far as decimals, right? we know that the uh, decimal point belongs right here to the right of the ones place. And the decimal point separates the whole number part from the fractional part. So what we'd like to do is notice a few things about this place value chart. The first thing we want to notice is that this is sort of symmetric. The ones place is in the middle, not the decimal point. But after that, on the left we have the tens, one space to the right we have tenths. On the left we have hundreds, two spaces to the right we have hundredths. So this is exactly similar on the right as it is on the left. We don't have to learn any new ordering for place value names. So what makes a difference? is that fractional pieces end in THS. They also use hyphens whenever we have two words. So here we have hundred thousandths. So we don't want to say eight hundred thousandths and have somebody mistakenly think that it's eight hundred thousandths. So a little bit different and we use the hyphens to connect names together. So let's try filling in this place value chart with a couple of digits and see what we get. Actually, a lot of digits. Let's start over here in the 10,000s place. We'll go say 2, 3, 0, 1, 7, decimal point, 0, 0, 1, 6, 8. And see how we might read this number. Well, the whole number part, we're going to read just as we did before. We'll put in our commas. We see that this is 23,000. comma, just like it is in the number, 17, 
and then we get to the decimal point. So we write AND, and I'm just capitalizing this here for emphasis to point out that this is where the decimal point is. You don't have to capitalize the word AND. And All right, after that, we want to look at this fractional part separately and just say, what number do I see to the right of the decimal point? As if you were going to read it normally. So these zeros are sort of leading, they don't do much of anything, and I see the number 168. So just write it down as you see it. 168. And then when we're naming decimal portions, we write down the name of the far right place value. So here we are in hundred thousandths. So this is 168 hundred with a hyphen thousandths. Don't forget the THS. The steps for what we just did are right down here. So take a second, read them over, and see what you can do with examples uh, 3, 4, and 5, and then um, come back to the recording. OK, we're back. Let's see how you did. So we have our decimal point here in the middle, and we're going to look at the whole number portion first. Find this largest place value, figure out what this is. Let's see, ones period, thousands period, this is 1 million. 1,600,000. Remember that AND is only reserved for the decimal point, so 1,600,000 AND. And then we need to find the place value for this far right. So we have tenths, hundreds, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, and this nine is in the millionths place. THS, right? Not millions, but millionths. Read this as if we would an ordinary number. So we have 500. And then name that far right place value. Millions. Hopefully you did that nicely. To write our number using digits, just like before, we have 564,000 and, so there's our decimal point. So let's just find this whole number portion first, 564,000. We need spaces for the ones period, spaces for the thousands period. 564,000, and then it doesn't name anything else, so we just have zeros over here in the ones period. And there's our decimal point. 2,098 hundred thousandths. So find the hundred thousandths place first. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. And what we're going to do is backfill this. So 2,098. The 98, the 8 has to land in the hundred thousandths spot. 2,098, there we go. And here, any leftover place values we have, we'll just fill in with a zero. Okay, one more. 6 and 75 ten millions. We can certainly write 6, that's not a problem. And is the decimal point. And then we need 10 millionths. So let's count all the way over. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, ten millionths. So again, backfill. 75 lands way over here. And all of these empty places receive zeros. All right, not so bad, huh? Okay, let's move on to rounding. My mother used to always tell me, say what you mean and mean what you say, and nothing is more true for that statement than mathematics. Equals means that things are equal, right? Equal. It means both numbers have the same value. Equals is not a symbol used for connecting our thoughts, and it's also not a symbol for um, writing a number next to a rounded number. And if we're going to use a rounded number, we want this little squiggly thing. This means approximately. 
So anytime you've rounded a value, we use the two squigglies. All right, so rounding. Rounding is really pretty easy. Um, sometimes we are under a few difficulties, but really the job is to figure out what a number is close to. If we want to round to the nearest hundred, well, it's probably easiest if we just imagine a number line. When you say we want to round to the nearest hundred, what we want to do is create a number line where we count by hundreds. So we might say 200 is here, 300 is here, 400 is here, right? And just write our number line. And then the job is to plot 327 on the number line, which is maybe right about there for 327. So the real question is, on the number line, is 327 closer to 300 or closer to 400? And of course, 327 is closer to 300. Now, we're not going to write 327 is equal to 300. You see what I mean about using equals? This is silly. It doesn't make sense at all. So let's go erase that. Not equal to 300. We say it is approximately 300. Or you can say something like 327 rounded to the nearest 100 is 300. Now I know, you're saying, I remember using some rules that had something to do with, you know, fives and rounding up and rounding down. And, and there are rules. A lot of the time you can actually do this a whole lot faster if you just use a number line. But rules are nice, and sometimes they're an efficient tool as well, and sometimes we use both a number line and rules together. So the rules pretty much say we want to underline the digit in the place to which you are rounding. So when we are rounding 327 to the nearest 100, we want to keep this, something in the hundreds place. And then we want to look to one place to the right. And the job is to say, hey, is this larger than 4 or 4 or less? So if 2 is 4 or less, so we do what people say round down. That means that the digit that we underline stays the same, and all of the rest of this stuff becomes zeros. So 327 rounded to the nearest 100. is 300. But really what we're doing is we're asking on a number line that counts by whatever it is we're given, is the number that we have closer to which hash mark? If it's perfectly in the middle, then we push it to the larger hash mark. Otherwise, there's always going to be a hash mark to which we are closer. So let's slide down and look at a different one. If we were going to round, oh my gosh, this is a giant number, to the nearest 10 million, and there I go, bad scrolling again. Let me get back up there. There we go. To the nearest 10 million. Let's find our 10 millions place. So we have the ones period, the thousands period, here's our millions period, and there's the eight in the 10 millions place. So we might be looking at um, 180 million, 190 million, 200 million, Oh my gosh, and these numbers are getting so large, I can hardly even put them on my number line. And let's see where 185,886,005 lands. Well, you know, it's right about here, and our number line is really not being helpful. So let's go back to the rules. 185,886,005. Underline the value that we're looking at, the 10 millions place, and then we will look here one space to the right and use the rules. Is this four or less? No. So what that means is that we're going to bump this eight up by one. And then everything else after it becomes zeros. And there we have it. So you might write something like 185,886,005 is approximately 190 million. And 
After all, if we're way up in the millions, what sort of difference is the five making? Yeah, not a lot. All right, so you try the next couple and see what you can do. Pause the recording here and then start it again when you're ready. Okay, let's see what you did. Rounding 2810 and 5431 ten thousandths to the nearest thousandth. So first we need to find that thousandths place. And we look to the right. So we're going to look over here and see the one and decide how we are going to round this. Is the one large enough to make the three become a four? No. So 2810 and five, four, three. And normally we might put a zero there, but this is sort of um, something we might keep depending on the situation or not. Normally we don't have trailing zeros in decimals, so it's perfectly fine if you wrote 2,000 810 and 5,000, sorry, 543 thousandths. Either one is fine. All right, let's see. Uh, question number eight was kind of a sneaky one. Rounding 56 to the nearest thousand, right? We need to find the thousands place, but there's no digit there. We only have something in the ones place and something in the tens place. So if we can't see it, it must be a zero. Let's look at it like this. So we have six in the ones place, five in the tens place, zero hundreds and zero thousands. So we are going to fixate here on this zero in the thousands place. And of course, look one space to the right. Is this zero in the hundreds place large enough to make the zero in the thousands place a one? And well, uh, no, it's not. It is not five or greater. So what do we do? Well, we get our approximately. It's approximately, um, yeah, zero in the thousands place followed by a bunch more zeros which of course, well, that's just zero. And now you're gonna ask yourself, you're like, is this right? This seems kind of weird, very strange sort of answer. So let's come down and check with the number line. Remember on a number line, we are just gonna create something that counts by the type of units that we're rounding to. So we're gonna count by thousands. So we would have zero and 1,000 and 2,000 and 3,000 like that and put our number on the number line. Where does 56 fall? Well, 56 is way down here. So really when you ask yourself, is 56 closer to zero or closer to 1,000? It's clearly closer to zero. So here's what we're saying. 56 is approximately zero. Well, it is when you're rounding to the nearest thousand. If you're counting by thousands, 56 is pretty insignificant. Okay, and that's enough for today. Uh, we'll see you during the next lesson. Take care. Bye-bye.